Now we begin looking at combinational logic synthesis. Synthesis is the term we use to describe the procedure where we take a functional description, uh, such as maybe a truth table, and we do all the steps in order to create an actual logic diagram. And the logic diagram is at the gate level, and it is something that can be directly directly implemented using various parts. <clears throat> okay, So what we're going to begin with is looking at a synthesis technique which is called a canonical sum of products. So canonical <clears throat> sum of products and that's, we usually use the acronym SOP, so canonical SOP. Canonical in this uh, in this context refers to a circuit that no effort has been taken to try to minimize the logic in it. So it's a very verbose uh, layout of the of the actual logic diagram. <clears throat> now the ultimate logic diagram we get, we might be able to do some uh, manipulations to it to implement it in less logic, but we're not going to do that in this step. We're just simply going to synthesize a canonical sum of products logic, logic diagram. So what is a sum of, let's begin by saying what is a sum of products? So a sum of products is where you have a sum term, which is an OR gate, and it is fed by one or more product terms, and product terms are AND gates. So the sum of products topology always looks like this. It always has <coughs> a stage of AND gates, and then it has a single OR gate right here. And then the input variables that come in over here, they may or may not have in inverters on them. So you actually have this inverter stage over here. And <coughs> this is the sum of products. And it's a very common topology that you see in logic circuits. So what we want to do is we want to start looking at how can we take a truth table and directly synthesize a logic diagram in this form. Well, the way we're going to do that is using this concept of a min term. Now, a min term has the following properties. It is a product term, and it includes every variable in the system. So it includes every variable in the system. And what I mean by that is if we had a system that had A, B, and C coming in, then the term the min, a min term would have to have A, B, and C in its product term. Now, what is what is different about each min term is that whether or not the input variables are inverted uh, <coughs> is not specified. So, for example, it's specified at this level. So, for, for example, that would be an example of a min term for a three input. This would also be a min term, A not B, C, or A and it would be not and it was C not. So notice that each product term has each of the input variables A, B, and C. Now whether or not they're inverted, that's the next thing we look at. But that's the the basically the form of a of a min term. The final thing that is the, a characteristic of a min term is that it asserts for one and only one input code. And the way that we accomplish that is by in inserting the inversions, okay? So if you notice, if you looked at this one right here, this right here, this ABC, it would be implemented as an AND gate where you had A, B, and C, and it was an AND gate. Well, just looking at the properties of an AND gate, the only time that this output would be a one is when you had a one, one, and a one on the inputs. At any other time, any other code, 0, zero 1, 1, or 1, zero, 0, if they went into an AND gate, they would produce an output of a 0. Well, that means that this min term right here will assert for only the code 0, zero, zero. So that is the min term for a particular input code. Now, if we wanted to, let's say, for example, make a min term that would assert for or a min term here, we could look at this min term and say, when would this assert? Well, we would have A, we would have B naught, and I'm going to draw it as an inversion bubble just to kind of track it a little bit easier. Then I'm going to have C naught, and they're all ended together, and then the output. So for this min term right here, the input code 
that would cause this output to be assert, asserted would be, well remember an AND gate has to have 1, 1, 1 in order for it to assert. Well that would result in A being a 1, but B would have to be a 0 because it goes through an inverter. And then same thing with C. C would have to be an inverter because that it's inverted. So this min term right here corresponds to an input code of 1, 0, 0. And that right there is the code that would cause that min term to assert. Okay. So the way that we're going to do this logic synthesis is we are going to take a truth table and we are going to write a min term for each and every row of the truth table that has an output corresponding to a 1. So let's take a, let's take a look at an example. Let's do an input truth table example. Well, actually, let's, let's do it this way. We're going to do a two input truth table. And so two two input, <coughs> and let's say that we have A and B as our inputs, <coughs> and it comes into some system. And let's look at writing the min terms. Okay? So let's put this in a true table form, because a true table is a functional description of what we want. And we're not even going to write the outputs right now. What we're going to do is let's just ignore the output for a second, and let's just write what the min terms would be for these codes. Well, one of the first things we do is let's, let's include the row number in this truth table. So when I write 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, I'm going to also write the row number. So I'll have 0, 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to come over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the min term. And the min term, I can actually give it a uh, unique variable name. I can give it a lowercase m with a subscript of the row number. So by doing this, I can easily indicate what I'm doing. So we have min term for row 0, min term for row 1, min term for row 2, min term for row 3. Now notice we're not synthesizing the logic yet. We're not looking at the output. All we're doing is just getting practice writing the min terms. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this situation, we'd have A is a 0 and B is a 0. And I want to write a product term which includes every input variable. So I know for, I know for a fact that I have A and it would be at least. And then I'm going to insert inversions on the input variables in order to cause this min term to assert for one and only one input code, which is 0, 0. So in order to cause that to assert, what I need to do is I need to put A naught and it with B naught. This here would correspond to a, a product term that would output a true when this input came along. Now notice it would never assert for any other input code. Let's do it for M1. So what I'd have is A naught, corresponding to that input is 0, and it with B. So that would be the min term for that. Then let's look at min term for row 2. That would be A and it would be not. And then finally we get to M3 and that's going to be A and it with B. So those are how we would write the min terms for each of these different rows. Okay. Now again, we haven't actually we haven't actually synthesized anything. We just wanted to look at how we write that. If you think about what those min terms are when you when you look at them as a when you look at them at, at the gate level, Really what they are is they're AND gates, and that, that makes sense, they're product terms. But they're going to have inverters on the inputs that will cause the outputs to correspond, to correspond to a 1. So for example, here's a graphical depiction of min term 0, so it's A0, B0. Well, I have A and B coming in, they both go through inverters, then they go into an AND gate. Notice that input code 0 and 0 both go through the inverters, they cause the inputs to the AND gate to be a 1, and that's the only time that the output will assert. Same thing with min term 1. I have an inverter on A, but not B, so that means that input code 0, 1 causes this AND gate to assert. And then same thing down here. B goes through inverter, but A does not, and that allows the code 1, 0 to cause this AND gate to assert. And then finally, for min term 3, we have 1 and 1 just go straight into the AND gate and produces an output of a true. So what this really means is that I can build a circuit that will cause some internal node to assert for one and only one input code. Now I can use that to I can use that to my advantage when I start trying to synthesize a real circuit because I can take advantage of the property that anything ORed with a one is a one. And that's where we can bring in the final the final stage of our sum of product circuit by oring together all min terms that correspond to an output of a 1. So let's, to, the best way to look at that is, let's take a look at a, our truth table again. 
So this time what we're going to have is we're going to have A, B, and F, and we are actually going to have a true table that we try to synthesize. So this would be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And let's just say we're going to synthesize something like this. Now you, you notice that's an exclusive OR gate, but, but we don't have an exclusive OR gate in Boolean algebra or Boolean logic. So let's just synthesize this using inverters, AND gates, and OR gates. So what we want to do is we want to come along. This is our true table, and we're going to synthesize the logic diagram. So that's where the synthesis term comes from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a min term for each output that corresponds to a 1. So right here, this is going to be row 1, and this is going to be row 2. And now I'm going to write these min terms. So I'm going to have a naught, that a naught corresponds to the input code 0 on a, and that's going to be ended with b. So this is the, this right here is the min term which will assert for only for the input code. So this min term is going to be responsible for producing that output. Now we're going to have this min term right here, and it's going to be a ended with b naught, and this min term is going to be responsible for asserting or for creating that output. Now if we draw this, what we're going to do is we're going to have the product term which we'll, we'll give it an, an internal name called M1, just to keep track of what's going on. And then we'll call this M2. And these will be the product terms corresponding to these min terms. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in A and B, and I'm going to bring in A, invert it. This time I'll actually draw a real inverter. And I'll bring B in here, and that's min term 1. And then I'm going to have A and B also down here. I'm going to bring A straight in, and then B will go through an inverter. Now notice that the way that I drew this, this is perfectly acceptable. You don't need to just have one variable A and then draw wires all over the place. You can, anytime you have two nets that are labeled the same thing, it's implied that they're connected. Okay, so let's think about what's going to happen here. As I cycle through this, these four codes, if I put 0, 0 on the inputs to these things, the outputs of both of them will be zeros. If I put 0 and 1 on the output or on the inputs, then M1 will be asserted, so I'll have a 1 sitting here. And then if I put 1, 0, that'll go away, and M2 will assert. And then finally, when I get to the last code, they'll both go back to 0. Well, what I can do now is take advantage of this property where if I have a 0 and a 0 or together, it produces a 0. So that means anytime I have input codes that don't have a min term, they are going to simply do nothing. So what's going to happen is that my min terms will output zeros, and then the zero and the zero will come over to the OR gate, and it will produce a zero. So these min terms themselves will, for these codes right here and right here, they output a zero, and then these zeros go into the OR gate. So that's how I've taken care of this input code and that input code. But then when I come to this input code, zero, one, this min term will assert, and this will actually be equal to zero, the min term two. And what happens is that one ended with a zero, will then pass through and the output will be asserted. So that's how I get this output right here. And then if I had one zero, what will happen is that this min term will output a zero, min term two will output a one, and the one will then go through the OR gate and assert the input, or assert the output. <clears throat> so this right here is a canonical sum of products logic diagram. So I had a procedure where I walked from the true table to the actual circuit itself. And let's, let's look at that just more graphically what we just talked about right there, and then we'll wrap this up. I want to actually draw out each and every <coughs> input code and see what the values are. So here is where, so here is where we are. We have the same sum of products logic diagram drawn four times. And we're going to first look at the input code 0, 0. Okay? So notice in this situation I wired A and B together, so it's a little simpler. So we got A is 0, B is a 0. Notice that when it goes through the inverter on this one right here, on this AND gate, it causes the output to be a 0 because B is a 0 and anything end up is a 0 is a 0. And then same thing down here, when 0 and 0 come through here, B is inverted, causes it to be a 1. So we have a 1 and a 0 ended together. So you have 0 and 0, which produces an output of a 0. So that's how we got row 0. Now if we go to 0 and 1, what happens is that notice that the inclusion of the inverter on this min term caused the input to this min term, or this product term, for this particular input code right here, to assert. The other one will not assert, because it asserts for a different code. But that 1 now will pass through the OR gate, because anything ordered with a 1 is a 1. 
And so that gave me row one in my true table. And then, then the min term two, same thing happens here. When I get the input code one zero, it causes this product term to assert because it was designed to assert for that code. The other one will obviously not assert, it'll be zero, zero. The one passes through the OR gate and produces an output of one, so that's row two. And then finally on this one, these min terms will not assert for this code one, one. They both produce zeros and the output is a zero. So that's the procedure that we use to go from a truth table to a canonical sum of products logic diagram.